Appreciate it, Paul. So the audio is off, but yeah, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. I just passed the 300 subscriber mark, so I'll be uh, doing a giveaway video tomorrow. I'm going to record it tonight. I've got everything together for that. So thanks everyone who subscribed to the channel, and be sure to hit that notification bell so you don't want to miss that video drop. So a lot of cool stuff came out today. I'm really excited. I've been excited for this future state stuff. As it's gotten closer, I've gotten more excited with all the details that have come out. But before we even get into future state, we did have the finale to death metal today. So I haven't gotten a chance to read any of these books. But I'm excited to see where this goes. It's supposed to be kind of going in two directions from here. And uh, one of the directions it's going in is that Generation Shattered book. So I made sure to pick up both both covers of those. Lee Bermejo had that awesome cover that I showed on the, early, uh, the video earlier this week. Excuse me. Tongue tied. A little tired. But there's some other cool stuff we're going to get into. But. I see the chats popping up, so let me say hey to everybody. That new guy, Ryan, thanks for stopping by. Mark Spector Comics, what's going on, bud? Remy Q Studios. That Southern Comic Geek, read Detective, tell me if it's any good. If it ain't, I can save my money. I, yeah, I definitely plan on reading Detective Comics. I'm going to talk about uh, how some of these future state books are grouped because it's not all just one uh, one specific time era that they're all they're all in. Thanks, everybody, for letting me know about the audio. Thank you very much, Remy Q Studios. Thanks, Paul. I can hear you too, bud. So, yeah, right off the bat, really uh, starting the year off strong, we did get the finale to Death Metal. And with all of these, I picked up two copies. I've gotten the uh, cover A and then a secondary copy. And I couldn't help myself. I haven't checked to see who did this cover, but it is amazing. It's got the Batman who laughed broken in half right down the middle with the darkest night coming out of them. And I sucker for covers with yellow backgrounds. I think it's an amazing color for uh, covers. Makes the rest of the art really pop. And uh, another big one that came out was a Generation Shattered. So moving forward into this whole Future State initiative, we're supposed to be having a completely loose continuity. DC Comics wants everything that's ever happened in their history to count as continuity. So that goes all the way back to Action Comics number one in 1938 to now. And you can kind of see an example of it with the DC Black Label stuff where the three Jokers came out. It was just a three issue miniseries. It was under the Black Label imprint. And it was uh, kind of just a piggyback off of the Killing Joke. So the Killing Joke has got uh, up until this point, like it's had uh, its place in continuity, but it wasn't like hardline continuity, like where different writers have come in and kind of just taken elements from this and that and just made it their own. They just took that specific story and just made a continuation to it. So I think that's what we're kind of going to see moving forward with DC, where they're able to just let their writers have more freedom to do what they want to do and kind of just attach it to this story or that story or kind of just pick up where they want to pick up, which I'm excited about. But they're going to get into the kind of the details on how they're going to do that with this Generation Shatter book. They've already talked about it a little bit in Death Metal with Wonder Woman using her lasso as an example with all the knots in it. Each knot represented a crisis or a reboot. And they're untangling all those knots. So it's just one uh, streamlined timeline. So I'm excited to see how they do it. I love the team that they have set up for this. And they tease this a little bit. You can see like a little prologue for it in Tech 1027. You see uh, Commandy with Skeets on his arm come and get Batman to take him on this great adventure that they're probably going to go on. And again, this Bermeo cover is just amazing. Beautiful cover. Amazing artist. 
And these are oversized. They did have a $9.99 price tag, but it looks like it's worth the money. So the big the big deal for the, the day, kind of starting the new year strong, you got DC's future state stuff. And a lot of people haven't necessarily been excited about all that. I've kind of gotten excited about it as I've read more into it and everything and seen how they're going to do it. Let's see if I have one of these laying around. So there's numerous titles that they're doing. Most of them have just two issues. There's going to be one this month, one next month. Some of them have three, and very, very few of them have four, like the Dark Detective that's actually following the Bruce Wayne Batman. And out of those that came out this week, we had Wonder Woman. We had the next Batman. And we had Superman and Metropolis. Which, if you notice a trend on these, there's your big DC Trinity, but it's not Clark Kent, it's his son Jonathan. It's not Bruce Wayne. It's, I don't want to spoil it for those who don't know. And it's not Diana. It's the new Wonder Woman. So we got them right out of the gate. We also had the Harley Quinn book drop this week. I did not pick that one up. Uh, wasn't exactly interested enough to get it. I was very interested and did pick up a copy of Future State Flash number one. And you do see the, uh, all the characters that we've come to know and love on the cover, there, there's a big twist to it. Wally West is the bad guy. He's after the other Flash family. And we're gonna, I'm excited to see why and how they're going to play that. And then Swamp Thing, number one. I was uh, kind of on the fence about this, but uh, I don't know what I've read about Swamp Thing during the uh, Infinite Frontier seems interesting, and I don't know how much this might tie into it. So I'm going to give this a read. It's only two issues this month and next month and see if I like it. And see if it might be something I want to check out beyond Future State once we hit that infinite frontier. Now, Wonder Woman, this is the brand new uh, Brazilian Wonder Woman. I don't know her alias name, but uh, it's apparently one that people uh, kind of spec'd on. I think it's getting picked up for a CW show or something like that. So it's just something that uh, you might want to consider picking up if you're looking at trying to grab some spec books that are coming out this week. And another one that I picked up today that I'm excited about is a trade paperback. This is Stan Lee's Just Imagine Volume 2. They have come out with these before, but I hadn't had them in a collected volume. I picked up Volume 1 when they released it probably about four months ago. And these are big honkers. Now, the uh, the Wonder Woman in Stan Lee's Just Imagine, she's actually Brazilian. So this is the second time that we've had a Brazilian Wonder Woman. But these, uh, these are fantastic. I don't know if any of y'all have ever read these, but uh, they're really fun. I, I highly suggest checking them out. They're done like you feel like you're reading a comic book from the 70s. I think they're done in the uh, mid late 90s, but they're super cool. That's uh, that's actually the Flash right there. I think that's Shazam right there. But there's Batman, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, and Superman. It's really really cool concepts. Completely reimagined. There's nothing really similar to the original characters except the name. Uh, I think that the Green Lantern character is actually a lot more similar to the New 52 uh, Alan Scott Green Lantern than anything. But they're, they're super fun. Very, very oversized. Definitely worth the money. And we have somebody here with us. Boom! There he is. How long you been sitting there? You're muted. Uh, I don't know, maybe five minutes. <laughs> yeah. So um, you you've had a chance to read some of these already. Yeah, I've been working my way through them, and um, I, I feel better about it now that I'm reading it and kind of seeing what they're doing. Like, there's a much, it's much better explanation than what they've given in like previews and sample pieces and everything else. Which, I mean, part of that, like, I feel like you had a pretty good grasp on it because you keep up with everything, you know? Whereas for me, it was like, I would read a snippet here, like, in an ad or something. And I'm like, well, that doesn't really help me any. Like, the the advertising element of this, I feel like, didn't really give enough explanation <laughs> if you weren't, like, reading every single ad, you know? So, it's pretty I, cool I, reading it, though. I just read that big preview issue, and then... Uh... When I'm reading a book, all that, dude, the ads have been heavy for the past month. Like a standard book felt like it's probably a third thicker just due to all the future state ads that they've had in it and stuff like that. But uh, did you start to notice where stuff is falling timeline-wise just from being able to read through the titles of this week? 
Uh, like as in the new timeline or whatever, like the new shattered well, generations thing. Well, well, no, with just the future state stuff, with how different books take place in different time eras, it's not just uh one. It's not a specific year on the Earth. It's not like a Kingdom Come was all just on the Earth and X amount of years in the future. This is different books or different links into the future. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like we were discussing. Uh, a little bit the other day like i think it's really cool because basically what they've done is like anybody could write a story with any character in any time period but it could still be on the same earth no longer do you need the the multiple earths to explain why there's like two supermen or something you know and so i think that's really cool because it kind of collapses everything down into like you know like somebody couldn't write a, a story about say batman in the year 2020 and then the next guy comes along and writes one for 2021. It couldn't be that vastly different, but you could always give somebody else a chance to write a Batman story and they could set it 25 years and, you know, different from the previous story. And so it's still Batman on the same earth, but it's enough of a time gap that like the world can be a little bit different, you know? Yeah. I think that's a really cool idea as well as being able, not just to how you mentioned, like someone could write 2021 and 2025, at this point, anybody can go back too. We can get, mm -hmm. we can get more golden age stuff. You know, it was a uh, I can't remember if it was the end of 2019 or the beginning of 2020 that we had the three issue series Superman smashes the Klan, where they had the uh, writer kind of take the old uh, radio broadcast show and put it into book form. But it was that was a, such such a fun read because Superman wasn't flying back then. He's running on telephone pole wires because he doesn't want to damage the ground when he's running through it, tearing up the street yeah. and stuff. So there's all kinds of really cool elements in these previous eras that we can like dive into head first. What's going on, Austin? And uh, that generation shattered. I, I haven't read it yet, so I don't want any spoilers, but seeing <laughs> Golden Age Batman in there, I want to do Golden Age Batman killed people. Yeah. Like, it, all the time. Threw them off yeah. buildings, threw them into vats of acid. Like I want to see that Batman. Yeah, it's uh I mean this isn't a spoiler because it happens pretty quick, but it's uh 1939 Batman. Like it's very specific about what Batman this is and uh so that's really cool, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was mad at that. We we talked about that on his channel. I was I was giving him a little bit of hell having fun with him about how poorly uh Batman wrapped up before Future State. But uh that Batman annual sure made up for it. Yeah, the annual was really cool. I like that. Wow. I did not like That's Batman really cool. 101 through 105. That was awful. I think like <laughs> as soon as soon as the first time during the Ghostmaker arc that they allowed Batman the dialogue to say, "Oh, we've gotten into a bunch of fights and I always beat him up and he can never beat me." As soon as they said that, I, I said it on the channel weeks in advance when we were hanging out. I said, "Dude, this is going to be filler garbage." Yeah. Like, they, they yeah, I hate history so packing like that. Like. Batman's history and his timeline has been so deeply explored, especially in that specific time zone or that time period, you know, like I just hate wherever they're like, Oh yeah. Remember how many stories we've written about Batman training to become Batman. We forgot to leave out this one major important detail. And it's like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like it gets <laughs> it old, like you a, know, it like a big thing too. Yeah. It yeah. You know, it'd be like if we were telling actual history and then like, <laughs> 50 years later, they're like, oh, yeah, we know you learned all this stuff in school, but did you ever hear about D-Day? Oh, they didn't tell you about D-Day? Oh, well, it was kind of important to all of everything, you know? Like, it just seems so weird that they keep on trying to, like, insert important things into his history. Like, let's just move past that. Let's get on, you know? <laughs> so what did you think about – and we were talking a little bit right before this, and uh, let me find one. So Superman's got one. Batman's got two flashes, not one thing is not. All right, so the future state price tags are a little bit all over the place, but it's because before all of this, uh, AT and T wanted DC to slim things down. They started dropping titles left and right, but they ended Suicide Squad. We're about to get a brand new one. They ended other stuff, and you're already seeing it on the solicitations, but not necessarily seeing are being replaced inside of existing titles. So where people might not have picked up the Outsiders in the past. Now you're about to be picking up the outsiders because Batman sells. So what they're doing is books have a $3.99 price tag, but you have Wonder Woman also $3.99. You have Superman of Metropolis with a $5.99 price tag. It's also a lot thicker, not a little thicker, a lot thicker. And it also includes Jonathan Kent 
Guardian, and Mr. Miracle. So it has a secondary comic in the back of it, like a short, I'm sure it's probably a little bit shorter than the main title, but they're including that in the back of it. So you're getting more comic, you're getting more universe, you're getting mm -hmm. more uh, stuff that's on the existing timeline with that main book included in it. Batman, Batman, which is probably going to be one of the hotter ones. I'm, ass I'm assuming that the Dark Detective, when all said and done, is going to be the, the hit of all of this, just because it's Bruce, you know? Yeah, but you're getting the Outsiders and Arkham Knights included with this one, and uh, yeah. this one's really thick. And this one is a seven ninety nine price tag, so you're getting three books in one for seven ninety nine. So there, and I did notice with uh, the Infinite Frontier, I was already seeing some of those, like the Batman title is going to include the Robin title, his standalone. So I, I yeah. think that's pretty cool, trying to get people mm -hmm. to at least try out some of these other books that they might not have picked up before, even if they only do it for a few months. But it seems pretty smart. Yeah, I read uh, Next Batman, and um, it it feels – I didn't page count. I probably should have, but I didn't page count anything. Um, Next Batman, it feels like, a, I don't know, like an 18-page story. So, like, it feels almost as long as usual, but not quite as long. Yeah. But then you have uh, The Outsiders. That one felt like, I don't know, probably 12 pages or so. Like, it's pretty substantial, but it's not a full book. Um, and then the last one, the Arkham Knights, it feels kind of the same, probably about like 12 pages or something, but you get a full story out of it. Like you don't feel shortchanged and it does kind of remind me of, um, like 2000 AD, you know, they have judge dread. That's usually the big story. And that's like 10 to 12 pages. And then the other four stories that'll be in the book are all like six pages or so. And so that's what this feels like to me. And I've said it a million times, like what I like about 2000 AD is like, even if I don't like every story, I don't feel cheated because there's stories that I do like, you know, and yeah, that's how, that's how like next Batman felt like next Batman. I was like, that's good. I really liked the outsiders. And then I wasn't really into the Arkham Knights, but it doesn't feel bad because the other two stories were so good. You know, I would have bought them just for the other ones alone. I was trying to check the timeline real quick to see if they have the outsiders listed with it. They do. So in the year 2025, which these are the, the features, the closest to us, you have Arkham Knights, Batgirls, Batman, Superman, Batman, Catwoman, Gotham city sirens, Harley Quinn, grifters, Nightwing, outsiders, red hood and Robin eternal. And that sounds like a lot of titles, but there's not that many future state titles total. So what that is, is that's all those little sub books included in it. So out the gate, three of those came in this one Batman. So I was wondering, uh, when I saw that at the bottom, I was wondering how they were going to fit all those titles when I didn't see them in the solicitations originally. So 2025 and 2030 seem like the two jam-packed years. Those are the two thickest years on the timeline. A lot of these titles take place on their on their own in their own year. Like Shazam is by itself in 2029. No other story takes place yeah. in 2029. Swamp Thing, same thing in the year 4,500. Yeah, you can definitely tell Swamp Thing takes place in a very different time. Yeah. Yeah, what was cool about uh, Next Batman is like that takes place inside Gotham City, you know? And then the Outsiders, and there's even kind of like a little a little setup that kind of like uh, passes the torch between those two stories. But the Outsiders actually takes place outside of Gotham. So, like, in this 2025 Gotham, it's almost like um, City of Bane or something. Like, everything is very on lockdown. And so, like, once you cross these barriers, the, the magistrate that's, like, controlling and locking everything down in Gotham, like, they don't have jurisdiction outside of that. But it's also kind of a no-man's land kind of situation. And so that's – they are the outsiders because they operate outside of that, that barrier, outside of Gotham, you know. And so it's really cool the way they set all that up because, and then you also have the Arkham Knights in there and uh, <laughs> Hey, and uh, the Arkham Knights also takes place like kind of in this weird area of Gotham. So it feels like they have kind of set up Gotham so that there's different areas that kind of everybody's operating separately, but they're all within the same universe, you know, I guess is the best way to put it. I'm definitely excited to get into them. I've been a, uh... Today turned out to be a lot. This is my first off day in like a long time. Long yeah. time. And it turned out to be a an amazing day. I've got all three of my kids with me. 
and uh, kind of wanted them to calm down. So we turned on the new Wonder Woman movie. Now they're all asleep. Worked perfectly. <laughs> and uh, even the dog's asleep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, monkey. Uh, Except my little one. She's yeah. uh, trying to play drums on the big TV. <laughs> monkey. Uh, did you grab the Flash? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That one, yeah. That oh, one yeah. was really cool. I like it. I, I understand like Steve's issue with with uh, Wally, but I really like the way that they set that one up. It's going to be really cool to read. Yeah, I, I was uh, big time torn between the covers on that one because I love that right there. Yeah. yeah that's horrific. Mm -hmm. I was talking about it uh, on that week's end, how him having his, his familiar classic suit, but being loose and having a familiar suit, but unfamiliar on him just adds that the extra layer of terror. And I've just stuck with the matching cover for the rest of them. I'm going with all A covers with all the future state stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And those covers are story relevant. So but I like it when that happens. That yeah. That is enjoyable. Yeah. There's a reason that he's all like scraggly and all that, you know, like it's cool. I, I really I like the way that really they cool set cool it up. That yes. reminds me of a, uh, remember into the spider verse, that really cool poster with miles jumping in the cities. Yeah. Outside whenever he's like, yes. Yeah. Yes. It's beautiful. I that's an like amazing is, scene yeah. in the movie. That's Whenever an amazing he falls, movie. Yeah, I mean, it is, but it's, that, that's it's, where it really starts to hit me in the feels. Whenever he starts to realize with pow great power comes great responsibility. I'm like, oh man, like <laughs> all like over him. again. Stan's cameo in there was awesome. He's like, it doesn't fit. It will eventually. Yeah. That was a, that was perfect. It was horrible timing, but uh, it was tragic when he passed away. But that movie coming out was great great timing for for that little tribute to go in it it was mm -hmm. awesome yeah steve said my <laughs> list for this week is only like seven to ten comics that seems big for you isn't it yeah i was gonna say usually you pick up like two that's books. kind of a, a big pool uh did that's, you haven't you said you haven't read generation did big pick up out four, five. not yet yeah, I suggest reading that one first. I mean, I'm sure you are, but I thought I read it first because no, I was I'm like, that'll kind of help explain. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you're still on the death metal thing. Yeah, huh? yeah see, I didn't yeah, read any of that. And I feel like there's like some slight elements of that that do kind of have some relevance there, but not having read any of death metal, like I didn't feel lost at all. No, I think if, uh, like, even if, even without the little, uh, intro but tech 1027 intro generation shattered future state that's a smooth line if you want to know why the continuity is is changed up that's what death metal's for is just saying goodbye to the old and to be honest with you i've been i've been hedging my bets that the robin king is going to have a, a big part to play in in this all popping off at the end mm. and i hope he does he's the most like dastardly character that i've seen come out of dc in a while He's absolutely twisted. He's sick. Can't get enough of him. Yeah. So here's Steve's pool for the week. We got Venom, pass. Death Metal, got it. Thor, pass. Crossover, got it. Next Batman, got it. Firepower, got it. Future State Flash, got it. Yeah. It was a... Uh, Dude, Thor 11, man. Whoo. They better bring the game. game. And then, of course, you got Friday still. When I pick up the rest. I did get some other stuff I'm not showing because... Uh, I went to <laughs> my, my little one is just terrorizing my other two sleeping. It's funny. She's going up smacking on her big sister and trying to take her brother's blanket. She's too cute. <laughs> she started walking not long ago. Now she's, she's just hilarious, man. Yeah. It's just funny That's watching her do stuff because she's so small. She's almost like a real person. Uh-huh. <laughs> I picked up, <laughs> I picked up some other stuff. I'm not going to show until the uh, giveaway video. I'll record it tonight, post it tomorrow. And uh, I got some cool stuff. I, I'm just putting together a really cool giveaway pack. And I'm very excited with what I got because I think that uh, it's got some longevity to it as well. I scored some stuff. I think people will be excited. But uh, uh, check out Slotted Up Nose. Robin King is fantastic. Every time, like, do you remember the first time you watched the Suicide Squad movie before you knew, like, how it played out? Like, yeah, when a... Uh, when the guard from Blackgate was in the casino or whatever, and they brought him to the back and he's sitting there cutting jokes. And then the Joker walks in just that tension. You're like, Oh, this dude needs to shut his mouth. 
that's the same feeling I get when Robin King hits. Like, oh, mm. he, someone's about to die horribly. <laughs> horribly. He's really cool that they were able to build that kind of tension and keep it going. You know, I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't read any of it, but it all sounds really interesting because people are still excited about those characters, and that's not something you see a lot. Not it, not anymore, you know. At this point, to read it, it's a commitment. It's a financial and time-consuming <laughs> commitment. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed it. I showed this off. I don't know if you saw it. The Stan Lee, just imagine. It's where these famous writers and artists get the chance to work with Stan Lee reimagining the DC universe as you know it. Yeah. And they do things with Stan Lee way. So uh, basically they, uh, Stan kicks an idea their way. They polish the idea, present it to Stan. And he says, I love it. Give me some panels. <laughs> and then he just Excelsior. slams it with dialogue. Yeah. Excel skewer. And then he slams it full of classic Stan Lee dialogue. Dude, they're <laughs> awesome. They are so cool in the concepts. He basically, oh, wow. all these, uh, all these larger than life characters, you know, like the billionaire, the last son of the greatest scientist ever on a planet, uh, the princess of Themyscira. He basically takes all these mega characters and brings them down to everyday characters, but then empowers them. It's, it's super cool. The concepts to it, man, it is so fun. And they're huge, thick reads. They're chock full of dialogue, you know, classic Stan Lee style. So pretty much, you know, there's plenty of dialogue in it. And I'll, yeah. I'll love me some dialogue, especially when I'm paying money for them. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that? But I picked up that in Black and Mortal Hulk. It was a silent issue. Silent issue. Well, I mean, uh, Alan Moore has been giving me my run for for dialogue lately. So, <laughs> yeah, Alan Moore has been awesome. Yeah, Southern Comic Geek and Steve, I think, are doing the uh, Power Ranger chat tomorrow, isn't it? Steve said, hell yeah, Will. Yeah, I think he's hanging out on uh... – yeah, there we go. So nice. he's going to be hanging out on Southern Comic Geek's channel like how Southern Comic did to hang out and talk to like Valiant and other specific characters like Rye and stuff in the, here recently. Just, uh, you know, just breaking down and talking on specifics, and he's going to get Steve on there to get him up to speed on some Ranger stuff. That's what's up. So that'll be fun. And congratulations yeah. to Southern Comic Geek for passing that 750 subscriber mark. It is, I think it's too late to enter his giveaway for it, but it's not too late to go subscribe to his channel and check out that content because he's always pumping some fun stuff out there. It's not always just that mainstream stuff. It isn't just mm -hmm. Marvel DC current stuff, which I really enjoy watching the stuff where we talk about the Star Wars on his channel. He's big into Valiant. And I just won the Bro Box this past Thursday. And uh, they have their store folios, which I never would buy because I just – you know, I just walk out with my books and bags, but uh, <laughs> but no, I'm the same yeah. way. Like, if somebody yeah. gave me one, I would take it and I yeah, might absolutely. use it, but that's, I mean, I'm not I'm, in any I'm, position to be like, oh, I need to buy one of those. Like, yeah, I just I just check out and go home with them. Yeah, but if I, I, I imagine drivers. if I was like at a convention or something like that, which uh, you know, they'll be back eventually, yeah. be a good tool to have in your book bag, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But uh, they have uh, designs on them, and they have like a Deadshot one, a Witchblade one, an Exo Man of War, and I, I picked up that Exo Man of War store folio. So in one night, Ryan, I won a giveaway on DJ Link's 500 subscriber video. Right after that on Taylor Wyndham's uh, 500 subscriber giveaway, I won a 9.8 slab, and it was DJ Link's donated prize for that as well. And then right after that, I won the Bro Box on uh, – two brothers comics all hey. three in one night and the night before that i won on steve's little hangout that he did with his mom and sister oh, for yeah. getting his sister channel over 500 subscribers the beautiful life of lizzie which everyone can go check out on uh youtube as well especially if you have kids steve's niece does some awesome content for children on there and everything so yeah everyone check that out and subscribe if you haven't already The store folios, they do look nice, and I just don't understand. I don't know how they would be convenient, just like for my normal just trip to the LCS kind of thing. That just seems like more yeah. work. Like, don't put those in a bag. Hold on, let me slide them in this store folio, fold it up, <laughs> make sure I get enough that they're not shaking in there. But, well, a yeah. lot of your Wednesday warriors are picking up too many books to fit in there anyway, so because they only hold like ten books, right? 
I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I walked away with 10 today, not counting what the stack I have behind the laptop or the trade paperback. Yeah. Seeing, I, I don't get uh, my stuff bagged and bored. I hate those bags that are self sealing. Hate them. I like the three mil comic care bags. So I. Oh, no. I like the self sealing because it stays on the bag. So I don't ever have to worry about the tape. You know, I, I don't know. I just enjoy the taped ones. I just don't like they seem too thin to me. I think they're like two mil. I, I've just always oh, liked yeah. the three mil. What's up, Lacrucius nineteen seventy one from New like, Mexico, a previous winner of our last subscriber giveaway. Jumping in later here. Uh, I'll be dropping the three hundred subscriber video tomorrow morning, probably, and how to enter that and what's going to be given away. So make sure you check it out. Yeah, I did have some self, uh, some cheaper like self sealing bags though, and I will say like all the glue kept coming off of those. So you do yeah, have to watch like what brands you buy, but I, I like the self sealing a little better just because, like I said, the tape's never stuck to the lid. You know, I've just always gotten Comic Air or Comic Defense. I think and that's not because of any other reason other than other than that's just what my dad's always got. You know, that's just it's been around so long. Inherited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, in the DNA. She thirsty. She thirsty. Monkey, you thirsty? <laughs> She's walking around with her bottle. So yeah, I'm gonna hop off of here and take care of her, man. Appreciate you jumping on, and uh, everyone who's out there, be sure to hit that like button on the way out. Subscribe to the channel. Share it with people. I'm at about 319, 320 subscribers now. Watch that giveaway video tomorrow. Details on how to enter will be in the video, as well as what I'll be giving away. Shipping is all on me. Uh, it's going to be all in the United States, though. Not paying for overseas shipping. Ain't got it right now. Holidays <laughs> aren't that far behind us. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate everyone yeah. stopping by and uh, checking out. Thank you for hopping on, man. Yeah. Make sure you clear your schedule out. Check uh, the solicitations and know when we live, and we only find them when they're dead comes out. Be prepared for the at weeks in following those releases. Mm -hmm. uh, we definitely need to break those down again. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you, everybody. As always, I'm Mark, but we are Legion.